So, uh, oh man, is that too loud or are we good? We're good? Turn your hearing aid down a little bit? Okay, now we're good. <laughs> uh, Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. We preached out here last week. What are you going back for? Because I had two messages last week. I wasn't sure which one to preach, so this was the second one. I want to do this one. I just tweaked it a lot more yesterday. I didn't get the memo to wear red, white, and blue, but I did get my socks. <laughs> no one wants a roundhouse kick to the face wearing these bad boys. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> All right. I didn't want to read this verse, uh, Psalm 34. You don't need to turn there. It says, The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Amen. So uh, Isaiah 46, uh, we spent last week, we looked at uh, idolatry, and uh, that message is putting down your idols. Put your idol down. And we looked at uh, the attributes of God and whatnot, and, and, and all those verses in comparison to the idols. He says, how can you compare me? Uh, 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 verse 5, to whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? Um, so we're going to leave off that, but kind of right tucked in the middle, this verse stuck out to me when I was first reading this. I want to pick up in verse 4. And I skipped over these last week. Actually, verse 3. The Bible says, Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age I am he, and even to poor hairs will I carry you. I have made, and I will bear, even I will carry and deliver you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, just thank you for uh, um, your Son, Jesus Christ, who came and shed his precious, innocent blood on the cross for our salvation. Father, I pray if there's anyone here in this room under the sound of my voice that is not sure of their eternal uh, salvation, Lord, in Jesus Christ, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. Father, I do ask that you bless this message, Lord, you bless this preacher. Help me to say the only the things that you want me to say and not to say anything that I should not say. Lord, bless your word as it goes forth in Jesus' name. Amen. So what stuck out to me in that verse number four, it says, even to your old age, these next three words say it with me, I am. Am He. I am He is the title of this morning's message. He reinforces this statement uh, with a short burst, uh, uh, or I say a three round burst because the military statements which reveal His person. So I want you to notice with me four uh, important statements uh, that God uses to show His relationship to His people of who He is and what that means for us. Number one, Jesus, uh, God says this. I, uh, sorry, uh, verse 4 again, even to your old age, I am he, even to whore hairs will I carry you, I have made. Number one, he is the producer. <clears throat> he is the producer. I have made. Uh, it is God who created man in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, where did time come from? Well, in the beginning, God. Scientists can't tell you where time come from. Ask, ask them. They don't know. It's, they have a, a whole bunch of things. I can tell you, in the beginning, God. God did it. Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. He is the producer. He is the creator. Amen? Amen. Why is this significant? Because God cares so much about man because he's God's crowning act of salvation. And through the fall of man... Uh, now he had to be redeemed, and God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? Amen. Uh, 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 to, to form man out of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Genesis 2.7 uh, We are each made in the image of God, and I think today, in our culture, in our society, how disgusting and shameful and disrespectful to our own bodies and to the God who bought us and created us to have an abortion. Amen? Okay, a few of us agree with that. To have an abortion is, is contrary to the word of God. Amen? Amen. It's shameful, it's, it's wicked, and, and, and for a mother to choose to destroy a child whom God created and put in that womb is a sin. God cares about human life. It's very precious to him. Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And God cares so much about human life. He wants fellowship. He wants nothing but fellowship with man. 
and woman, obviously. With humankind, he wants fellowship. Uh, God made you, so that makes you special in his eyes. Amen? He is the producer. He's the, he is the creator of life. And he wants you to know him. That's why you were born. Now, why is this important to know that he's the producer? Why is it important to know he's the creator? Number one, we can know, so we can know who to worship. So we can know who to worship. Because Romans 1 tells us that they worship the creature more than the creator. Why? Well, because they don't know God. They don't know him. But the law is written on their hearts, right? But a man, a man, a man has to hear divine truth because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So why is it important to know that he is the producer, he's the creator, so we can know who to worship? Psalm 95, 6 says this, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Psalm 29, 2, Give unto the Lord the glory do his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We sing that song. Secondly, why is it important we can know so we can know who to serve or whom to serve? Are you going to serve the creature or are you going to serve the creator? Amen. Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Who do you serve? We serve the creator. We serve the producer. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12, 20, uh, 12, 28 says, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably, acceptably with reverence and godly Fear. Why is it important to know who the producer is, who is the creator, so we can serve him with reverence and godly fear? Amen? Amen. Secondly, I want you to notice what God says in Isaiah 46 and verse 4. Not only I have made, secondly, he says, I will bear. I will bear. God, number two, is the pillar. God is the pillar. Uh, that word bear means to lift up or to hold up. Uh, he is the upholder. He is the bearer. He is the pillar that we come on. Uh, turn to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Hold your spot there in Isaiah 46. Hebrews 1 and verse 3. When you find say amen. amen. Okay, one of us. Amen. Got it. Some quick fingers here. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory, who is that? The Lord Jesus Christ in the express image of his person and upholding, upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, the Lord Jesus Christ, God, the triune God is the pillar. God is the pillar. Uh, what does he uphold? Well, we just seen there, everything. God upholds everything, including us. He says, uh, uh, God can't possibly bear me. I, I have too many burdens. I have too much to bear. I have the whole world on me right now. Well, actually, I know there's a song that's in direct uh, uh, op opposition to that, to that statement. What is that? Like, oh, I have the whole world on me. No, no. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Right? And we all know that's not Sunday school. That's primary. Jesus is the upholder. God's the upholder. He will hold you up. He will say, "I want you to sit down here and just be miserable and lowly as a child. I want to be. Help. I want to bring you up. I want to pull you up. I'm going to uphold you because I am the upholder. Amen. I'm the pillar. You can Amen. stand on me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. First Samuel two eight. First Samuel two eight. This is a good one. First Samuel two eight. Don't lose your place in Isaiah. First Samuel 2 and verse 8. He raiseth up the poor, first Samuel 2, 8, he raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up, lifteth up the beggar from the dung hill to set them among princes, to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. He hath set the world upon them. He has the power. Amen. He's the one who sets. He is the pillar. Amen. First John 3.20 says, For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. If God can't bear you, if God can't be the pillar, then he ceases to be God. He's not. We, we talked last week in Isaiah 46. He, he ceases to be the sovereign. 
And, until, and, and, and uh, if he's not the sovereign, then someone else has to be the sovereign because we have order and things. I was watching a video on YouTube about an atheist. He was that hardcore type atheist who would be the annoying atheist is what he called himself. He says, then I decided, then I was looking at nature and I've seen that there's order in the trees. There's order in life. There's order in the stars. Yeah, because God put it there. Everything's clockwork. He is the pillar. He's the foundation. Amen? And he upholds us. God is our pillar. We have to rest in him. The Bible says in 11, uh, Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen? Amen. We, we, we looked at that a few weeks ago. and We looked at uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance. It's something you have that you have to rest on something. Amen? Amen. Remember this? Amen. Some of us. So if faith is that substance that has to rest on a pillar, that pillar is who? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's who we rest on. I wanted to, oh man, i got to get this. Go to, go to page 529. Page 529. If you guys know this, I want you to sing with me, but if not, this is going to be a really bad time right here. We're going to be all, y'all got to sing harmony with me. <laughs> 529. Page 529. I, just, I, I wrote in here a, a, a firm foundation. A firm, how firm a foundation. Hopefully, I start this off with the right key. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in His excellent word. What more can He say? of sorrow shall not overflow, for I will be with thee in thy trials to bless and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. He is the pillar. He is the upholder. Amen? How firm a foundation that we will not be moved. Almost filled my water there. So you just need to realize that if you're saved this morning, that we have the pillar, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're standing on the solid rock. Amen. Standing on the rock. Firmly planted. Get a, get a clear picture of that in your brain. Now, uh, why is this important? Number one, he holds us for salvation. He holds us for salvation. We can't hold ourselves for salvation. If my salvation was 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 uh, 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 relied on me to hold it, I'd let go every time. I'd fall in, uh, and like we do, we fall into sin every day. A righteous man falls seven times, but get it back up. Amen. But the Bible says in 1 Peter 1 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready, ready to be revealed in the last time. God says, I got you in my hand, John 10, 26 through 28, and no man can pluck you out. I give unto them eternal life. My sheep hear my voice and they know me. Amen. You can't lose your salvation. God says, I got you. I ain't letting you go because you're on the pillar now. You put your faith in me now. I have you now, and I'm not going to let you go. You're not going anywhere. Amen. He ain't moving anywhere, so you ain't going anywhere. Amen. Praise the Lord. He will hold you. He will sustain you because he is the pillar. Thirdly, thirdly, Isaiah 46 and verse 4 again. So he says, I will carry, uh, I have made, I will bear, uh, even I will carry. Number three is the provider. He's the provider. I will carry. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, Philippians 4.13. Amen. Mm -hmm. Remember, Tim Tebow had that on and then he switched it. I forgot who I was telling to in here. Uh, he had that Philippians 4.13 on, uh, uh, on his eye black. And then uh, when they went to the bowl or whatever, he switched it to John 3.16. He said 90 million people uh, uh, Googled John 3.16 during that game. Wow. wow. That was all free, by the way. Uh, not part of the message. Uh, God says, I will carry. He's the provider. Philippians 4.19 says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Amen. I remember when I, was, when I, when I became the youth pastor here. And I said, uh, 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 Brother Cisco said, hey, I've been praying for the nine months that God would bring us a youth pastor, and you're it. I said, no way, I don't even like teenagers. And this verse right here, I was like, God, I was like, Amen. I, <laughs> I love them now. <laughs> I love them now, praise the Lord, change my heart. <laughs> um, but I said, I said, I don't even like teenagers, man, they just, they just complain, they cry, there's a bunch of problems, and uh, of pimples and everything. I was like, I don't want to do that, I already did it all back there. I don't want to do it again. I was like, God, this is going to take time. This is going to take. This is going to take resources. This is, 
you know, I don't, I don't have these things. And, and God, what are you, you going to do? And so, and, and, and I walked away from that. And, and, and Pastor Tony was like, hey, just pray about it. You know, just, just see what the Lord leads. And so that week, sure enough, I opened up my Bible. Bam, Philippians 4.19. It says, but my God says apply all your need. But, but Lord, I, I, I can't do it. Oh, Colossians 1.16. I said, I said, I said, I said, you know, I want to focus on me. Lord, I, I, I just got a brand new family. I got a brand new kid. I was like, our family's growing. Now we just found out we're second one, or pregnant with our second one. And I'm like, I'm like, I, I can't do this, God. Uh, uh, what about me? What about my family? What about my time with you? You know, what about this? And he says, uh, uh, the next page over, Colossians 1.16, but in all things, he must have the preeminence. I'm like, come on, you got to be kidding me. But anyway, that was all free as well. Uh, I carry you, meaning God is the provider. God is the provider. I, I can't provide for your needs, but I know someone who can. He has infinite resources we talked about last week, through, also in Isaiah 46. No, and also in our, in our Wednesday night series with discipleship. His resources never run out. Can't. You can't exhaust the resources of God. You can't. It's, it's like having a blank check. He's given us to every everything for, for for godliness, right? And we can't we can't just oh here God, I bet you can't fill this one. Can't, but I'm not talking about money, guys. I'm talking about other things in our life. <laughs> like yeah, I really want that money. You know, I gotta buy a private jet, guys. We're taking up a love offering this evening. Nobody nobody got that one. Nobody knows that preacher that got a private jet. Okay, I'll just keep that to myself. Uh, delete that off the video. Uh, God will always provide, no matter what the outcome, God is always there. No matter what the outcome, amen? amen. When you're too weak, his strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Lean upon his word, not on thine own lips. Amen? amen. So, uh, Psalm 37, 5 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord, also trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And verse 7 of that same chapter, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. So when you're too weak, his strength is made perfect. When you need wisdom, James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, uh, in whom is no shadow of turning. Amen? Amen. Oh, sorry, it shall be given him. That's a, that's a second verse. Go to Psalm 147. Psalm 147. Hold your spot there. Psalm 147. I feel like I'm going 100 miles an hour, so forgive me. Right, is everybody doing okay? We doing fine? Okay. Yeah. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. I was telling my wife yesterday, I had probably six different uh, things on my mind that I, that I was trying to preach. And I'm going through the book of James right now. We, we might go through the book of James, and I also want to go through Galatians. So I was actually going to preach a book of the Bible, and I'm like, I don't know what to preach. But I had this one since last week, and I just tweeted this uh, uh, last evening, or yesterday. So I'm like, ah, I'm thinking, I was like, you know, this is this is what God wants. I believe this is what, what God laid out in my heart, and I want to share with you all this morning. Psalm 147, verse 1. It says, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. And isn't it good to speak to yourselves in psalms and spiritual songs and hymns, giving praises? Uh, uh, we give the fruit of our lips in glory to the Lord, amen? And it's sweet to give that. It's a sweet-smelling savor to the Lord to give Him praise because He's given us everything, amen? Verse 2, the Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. We read that earlier. Verse 4, he telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. That one's Jupiter. This one's Stacy. This one's Joshua. He has all the names out there because he is God. Amen? Amen. Verse 5, great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Verse 6, the Lord lifteth up the meek. And casteth the wicked down to the ground. Uh, verse 7. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp of our God. Who covereth the heaven with the clouds. Who prepareth rain for the earth. Who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He is the provider. Verse 9. He giveth to the beast his food. To the young ravens which cry. And they also steal my peaches in my backyard. That's how they get fed. Verse 10, he delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. Praise God, because I got chicken legs. Verse 11, the Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Verse 12, praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion, for he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. Verse 15. He sendeth forth his command, commandment upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. 
He giveth snow like wool. I wish we had that out here. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his uh, ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters to flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. As for his as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. God is the provider. He gives the rain. He gives the snow. He feeds the birds. He feeds the animals. He clothes the hills with grass and, and brings covering. He has the herbs of the field to eat. And praise God, we can go hunting and get some deer and venison and eat as well from the food that he gives them so that we can eat as well. Go to Genesis 22, 8. Hold your spot there still in uh, Isaiah 46, Genesis 22, and verse 8. Give me a lot of Bible this morning, so hopefully you have a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we have Bibles in the back on that left shelf if you need one. Uh, Genesis 22 and verse 8. Genesis 22 and verse 8. It says, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them together. This is Abraham going up to, uh, going up to the mount. God says, Hey, I want you to sacrifice your only begotten son, your one and only son, Isaac. And I want you to give him to me. And by faith, Abraham does that and he takes him up. And, and Isaac asks the question. He's like, hey, here's the wood and, and, and here's the altar. Uh, but where's the lamb? And, 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 and Abraham says, God will provide himself a lamb for that burnt offering. Go to verse 13. Uh, it's, uh, the Bible says, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, uh, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Because he said, uh, I understand that in earlier verses. Hey, I know that you, you weren't going to hold your, your only son. You weren't going to withhold him from me. Verse 14, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. It shall be seen. That, that word Jehovah-Jireh means the Lord will see to it. The Lord will see to it. He's the provider. He will provide. Jehovah Jireh will provide. And, and, and he says back in verse uh, uh, 8 there, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. Uh, because he provides, he is approachable through Jesus Christ. Amen? God provides salvation as a free gift to any and all who will receive that gift by faith through Jesus Christ. John 14, 6 says, uh, Jesus says, I am the way the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's all a free gift of grace, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, for, for, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? Amen. Jesus, God says, I provided everything you leave, everything you ever have. Why? God will provide himself a lamb when John the Baptist would say, Behold the Lamb of God which comes to take away the sins of the world. It's him. Believe on him. He's the one through free gift of salvation that he died and paid your price on the cross. Amen? Amen. Free. God is the provider of all that we have. If God provides all that we need, why is that important? Why is it important? Well, because I need everything, Pastor. Yeah, of course. James 1.17 says this, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of life, uh, lights, with whom is no variableness, no shadow of turning. He's not going to turn his back on you. 1 Timothy 6, 7, and 8 says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out, and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. I know that was someone uh, in the audience this morning. That was their uh, theme verse last year. So, Number one, if we know God and we know who is the one that provides us all these gifts, all these things for free of his own will because he is the provider, that would lead us. Uh, why is that important? Well, we don't have to complain because we know who it came from. Amen? Amen? You don't have to complain about what I have or what I don't have because God giveth and God taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. 
I, uh, beggars can't be choosers, right? I, 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 and I told you guys, this is on, on Mother's Day. I'd say, hey, Mom, what are you making? Food. Okay, what kind of food? Edible. What kind of edible? Well, the poop on the stick. I'm like, that's great. You know, I, I, mean, you know, I know beggars can't be choosers, but don't you find that out now? You go to give a, 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 a homeless a person a, a meal or a food or whatever, and they're like, oh. Like what? And we do that with God. God says, God says, I provided you with a home. What more do you want? Like, well, I wanted this home with this and this, and I wanted the Bluetooth in here, and like all this stuff. God, it, no, 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 no. If you understand who the provider is, you understand who's the, he's the one that gives you everything. Can you pray for other things? Yeah, sure you can. Is it bad to want and to covet? Yeah, it is bad to want and to covet. But God will give you the desires of your heart if they align with his heart. Mm-hmm. Amen. Secondly, the righteous won't be forsaken. What do you mean? Well, why is it, if God provides all I need, why is that important? Well, we know that the righteous won't be forsaken. Psalm 37, 25 says, I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Nor his seed begging bread. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Uh, God says, I will see to it, Jehovah Jireh, the, the Lord will provide. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee because I'm the provider. I'm here for you. Amen. 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 Lastly, and I'm done. This was quick this morning. Isaiah 46, verse 4. It says, I have made, I will bear, I will carry, and lastly, and will deliver you. He's the protector. He's the protector. So not only is he the producer, not only is he the pillar, not only is he the provider, but he is the protector. That word deliver you, or that word deliver means this, to be smooth. I'm looking a little more. Uh, uh, to escape as if by slipperiness. So I'm thinking, I'm like, I was like, God is smooth. Okay, smooth. I was like, escape by slipperiness. So I'm thinking of a water slide. Well, I'm thinking of a quick getaway, kind of like when my kids are playing in the uh, in the backyard on the on the swing set or whatever. The slide is the quick getaway. It's smooth, and you if you're in a time of trouble, God says, "I am your provider. I'm your protector. I am I am the deliverer. I am uh, to be smooth by slipperiness and escape. Get down that slide." God takes us out of the uh, out of those things, Amen. He, he pulls us out. He keep, you know, he'll keep you in the storm for a while, just till you know that He's God. Be still and know that I am the Lord, Amen. Amen. He's the rock. He's the strong tower. He's my buckler. He's my shield. Psalm sixteen one says, "Preserve me, O God, for in Thee do I put my trust." Go to Psalm eighteen. Go to Psalm chapter eighteen. Just want to lift up the Lord this morning. I know it's not a Memorial Day message. I didn't really have one, so this is what God gave me. Uh, uh, Psalm 18, verse 35. Psalm 18, verse 35. It says, Thou hast also given me the shield of my salvation, and thy right hand holdeth me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. I think of uh, 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 the snowshoes. You know, you don't you don't just wear regular shoes in, in three feet or six feet of snow. You know, in the mountains, you put on snowshoes to give you a bigger surface area so your feet don't slip. God says, "I am that for you. I don't want you to slip as my child. I want you to be upheld in by my power of who I am, and we can know who He is by reading His Word." Amen. Psalm forty six one says, "God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble." Psalm 3, 3, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of mine head. <laughs> so uh, Proverbs 30 and verse 5, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Proverbs 18, 10, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. God is the protector. God is the protector. And we can trust God because of who he is and what he tells us he is from his special revelation of the Bible. We have general revelation of creation, right? That's general revelation, but in and of that in and of itself can't tell you the plan of salvation like the special revelation came from God's Word. And we can rest in Him because of His attributes that we learned about last week and, and who He tells us He is right here in verse 4. 
And he says, and even to your old age, I am he, even to whore hairs, will I carry you. I have made, I will bear, I will carry, and will deliver you. Amen? Amen. He'll carry us through trials, through temptations, through sorrow, through grief, through joys, through good things in life, through distresses. He'll sustain us when we're headed down the mountain and into the valleys. Right? And life is good. Uh, Brother Bruce is showing me that bit. Life is good when you're still on the mountain, but he's still God in the valleys. Right? Amen? Amen. God, is the, God is the protector. He's the sustainer. He's the carrier. He's the producer. He's the pillar. And he will carry us. 1 Peter 5, 7, lastly, cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. Wow. What does that mean? Well, our job, the Bible just tells us, cast all your care upon him. Our job is to cast care. His job is to take care. Right? His job is to take, take cast all your care upon him. Uh, take no thought for your life. What is the moral, right? You now know it's not what a day may bring. I'm casting all that. I don't know Jesus, but you got it. And God says, I do. I am your protector. I am your provider. I am your sustainer. I am your pillar. Amen? So let me ask you this. Is there a burden you're carrying this morning? Is there something going on in your life that, that's weighing you down, saying, God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this situation. God, I, I, I know... I, I I, I, didn't, I, I realize that you're my protector. I realize that you're the pillar. You're the creator. You're the producer. But Lord, Lord, I'm just struggling with this thing. Well, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your care upon him for he cared for you. Why not give it to God who can take all of your load? God never intended for you to carry your load. We, we talked last week about the idol. But even, even, even carrying a load of whatever the weight is and saying... I just, I don't understand. I, 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 God says, well, just, just pray. Give it to me. Cast it upon me and say, all right, I'm done. It's yours, Lord. Please take care of this situation for me. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, but you are the protector. You are the provider. You are the sustainer. I'm casting all my care upon you. Take it, Lord. And then, But don't leave the altar and go like this and drag it with you. Carry it behind you. Don't do that. Just leave it all on the altar, amen? He's the provider. God says, God says this back in verse 46. I even left this out, guys. I'm sorry. Even to your old age I am he, and even to whore hairs will I carry you. God doesn't, what does that mean? I'm not, I'm not just going to take care of you one time in your life. I am carrying you throughout your life. When you were a little baby, I knew you in the womb before you were even born, even to the whore head on your the gray hairs on your head. I am with you, you know, as, as a father, if you receive Jesus Christ by faith and trusted in Jesus. He says, I have you now. I'm your father. I will carry you all the way into your old age. Don't think I'm going to forsake you when you get old and say, ah, he's not worth it. She's not worth it. You can't serve me anymore. I don't need you. No, 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 no. God says, I got you. I'm your provider. I am your protector. I am the producer. I am the pillar. So I want you to do this morning. Tell it to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this message. Lord, I believe this is what you wanted me to say. Father, I just let your word go forth and you accomplish what it is going to do and it will not return unto you void as your word tells us. Father, I pray if there's any in this room that is not saved under the sound of my voice, that today will be the day of their salvation. And Father, I just thank you that you are our pillar, you are our producer, you are our protector, and you are our provider. Lord, I thank you for these truths of the Bible. Sometimes we just need to be reminded of those things and those great things that you are and that you do for us, Lord, and how much you do love us. And I thank you for loving us enough to send your son, Jesus, to die on the cross in our place. And Lord, as the piano uh, quietly plays, if you'd stand to your feet with every head bowed and every eye closed.